Hi everybody, Tom here. I hope you're all enjoying Flowers so far. Um, there's been a lot of fun replaying that game and remembering everything that I really loved about it and why it's one of my favorite games. And it is. It's a really important game to me and I really hope that uh, you're all enjoying the game, enjoying the videos, as well as taking a moment to kind of relax and get caught up in the environment and the feel for the game. And we will be resuming updates on that shortly. I just wanted to take a little bit of time today to kind of talk about two pretty important things I feel in understanding Flower itself, which is a little bit about the company that made it, that game company, uh, I, I, that's literally their name, that game company, as well as its predecessor title, Flow. Uh, Flower, as I mentioned earlier, came out in about 2009, I believe, and it is the second game by that game company, their first one being Flow, and most people would know them when they made a Journey about three years later in 2012, I believe. Now, you don't need me to tell you about Journey. Journey is uh, an immensely uh, beautiful, amazing game with uh, wonderful storytelling, beautiful pacing, amazing environments, but you don't need me to tell you about it because everybody else has talked about it when it came out. It won a ton of awards and got really got the recognition that it deserves, and uh, if you have the time, I really recommend checking it out. Um, it's about a two-hour experience that will absolutely change you, but... I really want to talk more about that game company overall and Flow, the predecessor to Flow. So that game company has always been kind of an independent studio, started in about 2005 by uh, Genova Chen and Kaylee Santiago in California, I believe. Um, one kind of, one story, one anecdote that kind of their principle for making games is a story of Genova Chen himself, born in Shanghai, moved to the States. So coming from a multitude of different cultures and taking it all in, he really wanted to focus on making games that kind of had a universal appeal that could tell a story without needing to kind of express it in words itself. and. Uh, but in that, I've literally just described Flower and Journey. But Flow is a really interesting one because I think it's kind of the more forgotten of the three games that that game company made for PS... for, for Sony, rather. Because um, Flower got, well, got relatively popular and Journey, like I said before, got a ton of awards, accolades, and was really recognized for its brilliance in and of itself. But Flow is a relatively simple game. It actually got started as a Flash game, I believe, that they decided to bring over to the PlayStation 3. Uh, you can actually see in Stage 3 of Flower, there's one tunnel that you can kind of go into, and you'll see a couple of, like, insect-looking things lit up on a wall, and that is, in fact, two characters from Flow, and I don't show off the trophies in my run, but you do get a trophy at that point called Life Could Be Simple, which is kind of a theme that applies to both Flow and Flower, and it's actually um, kind of the subtitle to this entire LP. Also, before getting into Flow, I should also briefly mention Abzu, which is a fairly recent game that just came out recently. And while that game is not actually made by that game company, it's notable because it's actually, um, I think it's done by Giant Squid, and its founder, Giant Squid's founder, is the art director from Flower and Journey, so even though it's technically not a that game company game, it has the same feel of Journey and Flower, specifically if you see, like in here, 
flowing through all the different fish and going through the water. It has that same feeling of, you know, being pushed through the wind with all the flower petals following behind you. So, let's kind of jump into flow here. Now, if Journey is just a tale of traversing across the land with one person and Flower is more of a poem between um, technology and nature, Flow is all about um, simplicity and uh, kind of that feeling of you know, to its name, going with the flow and, you know, it's literally what they tell you at the starting screen, go with the flow, tilt to move. So much like Flower, you play this one entirely with the motion controls of the PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 4, because much like with Flower, I'm actually playing the uh, an HD re-release of both Flower and Flow. So here we are at the title screen. Uh, I'm currently a, you can, I, I've unlocked about four of them now, but you can play, you begin playing as this little wormy guy right here, and the more you play, you can unlock up to six different guys, and it's very simple, all you really want to do to beat this game is progress to the next level, you do that by eating the circle guys with a red, um, a red center if you want to go up a level you want to eat the one with the blue one and before you go on you want to eat pretty much everything you can find in a level which give you these little like blue spheres and that's kind of like a life and power up and eventually you can eat other life forms and evolve if this kind of looks like the um you know mitochondria level in spore uh, that's actually not really an accident because apparently Genova Chen, before starting work on on Flow, um, actually worked at Maxis and helped work on Spore. So, you know, you can definitely see uh, both of these works influence on each other. But yeah, he definitely he definitely took um, one to kind of inspire the other much like in Spore, you want to eat everything that you can to make your guy grow, and if you want to get a speed boost, part of your lights will go off, and eventually you'll reach kind of parts in uh, later ones where things can fight back, things can eat you, uh, you'll encounter other life forms, you can kind of see like a level below you of even, you know, what's even bigger down, down there and what can hurt you, and as you see here, the more you grow, You'll get new appendages, new decorative parts, new, um, more kind of like hit points. Because things, as much as you're eating things, things can eat you too. And the more kind of blue orbs that you got from eating other ones, the better chance you have at survival. Once you get down deep enough, you'll eventually find kind of like a boss monster, which you don't really have to even fight. You can just kind of skip right past it if you want and go right for the exit. And once you kind of reach it, once you once you go down far enough, you'll eventually find kind of like an egg of a different um, mitochondria of a different creature. And once you get that, it brings you back up to the menu, and now you can play as this second one that you've unlocked. So the I already unlocked a couple of them here, but the first one you get access to is this kind of you fight it you can fight it when you're the worm guy but it's a um kind of like a spinning almost like an umbrella uh you know open umbrella kind of thing where when you spin it small creatures become attracted to you and if you are if you care to learn it which it's kind of a pain to control uh you can kind of tap to give you little speed boosts in directions. It's uh, different from the other ones in that you don't really lose um, anything by continually tapping or holding down the boost button, so um, there's really not much to be said about that. Getting to the end of this one. 
we can get a third creature here. It is actually one that we see when you're... F Normally, your next creature that you get is one that you kind of see when you're going through your current one. I think give you a little hint as to who the next one's going to be. So this kind of... He kind of looks like a dolphin from an overhead perspective. He, um... By dashing, you immediately get rid of a limited, um... Light. So... Upgrading him can be a little tougher, just because you want to be dashing all the time, and uh, you can quickly run out of all your dash power. And the bigger he gets, the uh, bigger his mouth gets, can kind of eat a little more. But aside from that, nothing, nothing too much about him. He, he's pretty good for taking out... Uh, for taking out other guys. Uh, by the way, uh, I haven't really brought it up, but I don't really show it off here, but there is co-op in this game if you have another player who wants to pick up and grab another a new mitochondria that you've unlocked. You can you can co-op it, and I'd imagine that can get pretty hectic, especially if something like Friendly Fire is turned on, and you can just turn into an Ouroboro seeding its own tail, but... That's neither here nor there. Um, there are some creatures that if you try and eat them, it'll turn you red, which means creatures, I think, will are, become more attracted to you and will try and attack you. Or these annoying yellow guys here where if you eat them, you can't eat anything for a little while. Um, at a point, they kind of become a little more of a hassle to try and take down everything, and you just want to kind of get a little bit bigger and then just head on to the next stage. Uh, the fourth guy here with the one I started this video off on with this little green claws. He's kind of an interesting one. As far as I can tell, when you eat, when you hold down the boost button and eat one of them, it kind of freezes everything in place. So it's possible to get very big as him very quickly because you can just kind of stop, you know, other monsters from attacking you. And uh, once you kill something, you can just kind of eat all the pieces it breaks down into relatively quickly. Uh, at the end of his, which he has some pretty long, ridiculous boss battles, you get um, this guy who kind of looks like he's got a little Q coming off him. Uh, he plays very much like the original worm, but he can get um, wings and um, his dash works a little different. Uh, he'll automatically lock onto the nearest available target and try and take a bite out of it, which can actually get really annoying really fast, especially when you're trying to go up against some of the bigger guys because you kind of just dash right into the mouth of your opponent. Now, um, there isn't really any way to die in this game. If you get all your life points or your, you know, life stations or whatever you want to call those red dots and you eaten, um, you just go up a level, and you kind of get a chance to get bigger and go back down. Um, so there's really no danger, but man, it can get really annoying really fast when you're down to only one health and continually trying to take out the red spot right behind his head because either he will notice you or you'll run, you'll keep running directly into his mouth. So uh, we're seeing the sped up part of this match here, but... This thing took me about 15 minutes to take down. It It's kind of a pain. And then finally, um, once you get to the end of this, which this whole segment is kind of like the final battle of, uh, of Flo, then you get your final one, which in addition to having a very rainbowy uh in addition to having a very rainbowy background, when you get him, it allows you to go into the final stage, which is just a credits mini game. There is something very similar for Flower. We will be seeing that, um, but you can end up with an incredibly long chained creature at the end. And uh, yeah, that's it. So. Um, I, I just think it was really important to see in the midst of playing Flower and 
um, appreciating Flower to really kind of know where it came from, the studio that made it, what preceded it, and and particularly knowing where the life could be simple um, catchphrase kind of comes from. I think Flow and Flower are definitely a combination piece, you know, obviously given that they're only two letters apart. But um, a lot of people I know played Flower and never really got a chance to play Flow or didn't even think that there was a ending to it. So I just figured it would be a good time to do a little intermission video and uh, talk about the history of the company that made this game and what kind of came before it to help inspire it. Because they definitely say Flower is a spiritual successor to Flow and I definitely believe that. So, I hope you're all really enjoying Flower. I hope you enjoy the last couple of segments uh, at the end. And um, if you like what you're seeing, tell a friend. Because I like to think of this LP less as a informative Let's Play and more of a good 15-minute kind of therapeutic... Um, therapeutic kind of uh, yoga sessions or meditation segments. And eh, no matter how stressful your day is, you can always take 15 minutes to relax, listen to good music, and let yourself get lost in the field. Alright. Well, thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.